Kevin Hart, Seth Rogen, Seth McFarland, David Spade, Sean Hayes, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Jane Lynch, John Stamos, Kathy Griffin. Welcome to the Comedy Central roast of Justin Bieber. Uh, here's the thing. Justin Bieber has tens of millions of fans. I mean, most of them are either in middle schools or or standing at least 500 feet away from one. I mean, <laughs> it's the truth. I'm not saying anything that's not the truth. He's a worldwide superstar. There's even a wax figure of Justin at Madame Tussauds in London. It's incredibly lifelike. I've seen it. He's face down in a wax usher's lap. It's, it's weird. <laughs> that's a dick sucking joke. We off to the start. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna get dirty tonight. <laughs> Tonight, here's the thing. Tonight, we're gonna do what his parents and the legal system should have done a long time ago. We're about to give this boy an ass whooping that he deserves. We are. We are! Why invite me if you don't want it to get ugly? I don't understand that. I mean, come on, we got the right days to do it. We got Ludacris, we got my man Snoop Dogg, Shaq. This is crazy. Usually when I see this many brothers sitting together, <laughs> Mari Povich is about to open the envelope. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> Shaq, take that dumbass look off your face. You look stupid. <laughs> Here's my question. Shaq, how did you even end up on the roast? That's what I want to know. They must have called up the NBA pregame show and said, you know what? Send us the third funniest guy. <laughs> Wait, he's unavailable? Send us Shaq. Let us get Shaq then. Uh, <laughs> my man Snoop Dogg is here. There he is. Yeah. Wait, wait. Let me clear something up for all the young people here tonight. Uh, Snoop, Snoop Dogg is a rapper. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's my aunt's favorite rapper. You know, <laughs> for all the black people that are confused about that old white woman on the couch, that's Martha Stewart. Yeah, right there. That's Martha Stewart right there. Martha, do me a favor and uh, put your ankle bracelet on vibrate so we don't have no problems <laughs> doing this show. Before we get off to any roasting and any digging, I want everybody to understand this. Justin Bieber really does have it all. I'm serious. He has a dick and a pussy. Justin, stand up. Pop that thing one time. <laughs> show him. Give him that hermaphrodite twerk one time. I've seen it. No. No. Let's be honest, Justin, you made a few mistakes. You're not perfect. He's done some things. Dude, you got caught peeing on a video in a mop bucket. <laughs> Why are these idiots who work for you taping you pissing? That's what I don't understand. Like, when someone is filming you taking a piss, if you don't want them to tape you, you turn around, you say, turn the goddamn camera off. Unless it's mandatory, like Snoop pissing in front of his parole officer. That's different. <laughs> Snoop, that guy's got to see your dick. I get it. Don't worry about it. That's a criminal joke to Snoop, because he's been to jail. <laughs> you want to cover a man's health? He's in a lot of slack for taking his shirt off all the time. I don't get it. I don't understand that. Justin, let me tell you something, man. Okay, if you can take your shirt off, you do it. You do it as much as you goddamn can. Seriously. Look at Shaq. Shaq? Shaq hasn't taken his shirt off since high school. Okay? That's a true story. That's a true story right there. Martha Stewart had a shirt off in my dressing room. Stop, stop, stop. Don't get the wrong idea. She just wanted me to titty f her. Yeah! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Stop. I'm just trying to loosen y'all up. I'm sorry. Martha, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is that going to affect me getting free sheets after this, Martha? Please. I messed up my chance at getting free sheets. God damn it, Kevin. Me, personally, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at Justin. I'm not. I'm gonna tell you who I'm mad at. I'm mad at his manager. You, Scooter. That's right, Scooter Brian, right there. Scooter is the man that actually discovered Justin Bieber. Scooter Brown was 25 years old. He was a single man living in Atlanta alone when he found Justin Bieber on the internet in the middle of the night. <laughs> the middle of the night. He found a little white boy with nice hair on the internet. Sounds to me like Scooter was fresh off a dick beating session, if you ask me. <laughs> now, I don't know what Chris Hansen is, but he missed one. 
That's a goddamn predator if I've ever seen one right there. Now, Justin, unfortunately, Selena Gomez, she couldn't be here tonight. Um, no, she couldn't. She couldn't. Just because she didn't want to come. There's no reason she just didn't want to. <laughs> she, she didn't want to be here. I wish I had something better to tell you, but I don't. <laughs> no, Selena, Selena had got word that there was rumors of Justin dealing with Kendall Jenner, and that shocked me. I was like, what the f***? That's what I said, what the f***? I was like, if you gonna deal with a Jenner, I thought it would be Bruce. That, that's what I thought. If it was a, just one, I'm sorry, that's the only one. I swear to God, guys, no more. It's no secret that Justin wants to be black. Can we all agree on that? Justin loves the black culture. Everybody knows that. My thing is this, Justin, I just want you to come to terms with the fact that you're not gangster. That's Justin's main problem, man. You're not a gangster. Accept that. I mean, come on, Orlando Bloom took a swing at you. That's not gangster, Justin. <laughs> it's not. He's got a perfume called Girlfriend. That's not gangster, Justin. <laughs> you threw eggs at a house. Gangsters don't throw fucking eggs. Snoop, when the last time you threw eggs at somebody's goddamn house? <laughs> we don't do that. It's not gangster. Justin, Justin sang the N-word on a video in a song that was about killing black people. That's pretty goddamn gangster, Justin. I'm gonna give you that. <laughs> That's the gangster you get right there. He actually got in a lot of trouble when he got caught saying the N-word on video. That right there, that should make you feel stupid. Reason why I say that, because you know who didn't get caught, Justin? The billion other white people that say the N-word every goddamn day. I'm talking about you, Martha. I know you say it. You're probably thinking it right now. <laughs> look, at, look at that little nigga up there in his little nigga tux. <laughs> look. <laughs> With his little nigga shoes, look at him. Up there dancing. <laughs> Thankfully, Justin avoided the usual, uh, I, I guess you could say, former childhood mistakes. You know, he hasn't had a sex tape. That's good for you. Um, he hasn't killed anyone. You haven't bought a monkey? Oh shit, you did. You bought a monkey. <laughs> and you abandoned a monkey in Germany. What the f was that? Like, you abandoned a monkey in Germany. That was a privileged Beverly Hills monkey. You showed them your lifestyle, and then, then you dropped them off in Germany? Now that monkey's turned out in the goddamn German zoo sucking rhino dick because of your bad decision. My name is Seth Rogen. Welcome to the Comedy Central roast of James Franco. Why, uh... Why are we here? Why are we doing this? I don't know. How high was I when I said I would do this? It's crazy. Is this punishment for the guilt trip? Is that what this is? I'm just glad I'm not alone up here. I got Nick Kroll, Jonah Hill, Sarah Silverman, Andy Samberg. This dais is literally Hitler's wet dream, though, in all honesty. It's got Jews, gays, and whatever Aziz is. This is so f***ed up to do with you guys here. <laughs> this is so mean. <laughs> I really like these people. <laughs> anyway, I'll start with the Jewiest and work my way down. Sarah Silverman is here. Uh, <laughs> Sarah and I actually worked together on the film uh, Take This Waltz, uh, which she was great in. She actually did full frontal nudity in the movie. Uh, <laughs> which was fantastic. Uh, it was amazing. I always thought she was very liberal, but it turns out she's actually a giant Bush supporter. <laughs> Huge. Aziz Ansari is here. <laughs> yes. This is actually the longest Aziz has ever heard me talk without checking to see if someone more famous has texted him. <laughs> I want to make fun of you for being friends with Kanye West, but truthfully, it's the only cool thing there is about you, so I can't do that. <laughs> Jonah Hill is here. <laughs> a lot of people compare uh, Jonah to a young Belushi, Jim Belushi. <laughs> Jonah's actually started to move away from comedy. Uh, it happens five minutes into his movie, The Sitter.
Andy Samberg is here. Uh, <laughs> And he plays a cop on his new Fox show. His first case will be investigating the disappearance of his new Fox show. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are live tweeting the show tonight. Speaking of 140 characters no one gives a shit about, Bill Hader is here. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's a great impressionist. Right now, he's doing an impression of a guy who really regrets leaving SNL. <laughs> Nick Kroll is here. <laughs> yes. Nick Kroll is the scary Jewish face Mel Gibson runs from in his dreams every night. <laughs> Let's start talking about someone people actually give a shit about. James Franco. <laughs> uh, you know, who is the real James Franco? Is he an artist? Is he an actor? Is he a scholar? He's tough to pin down, although I've heard many guys have been able to do it. <laughs> why are we here, James? Can you tell us why the f we're here? No. Idea, why? But... I know why I'm here, because whenever you do something without me, it sucks. That's why I'm here. We're here tonight so James can live out one of his unfulfilled sexual fantasies, to have a room full of his friends shit all over him. <laughs> Franco, you look like you're asleep. Did you just read a James Franco book? He's had a great career. Uh, Judd Apatow gave both me and him uh, our start on the show Freaks and Geeks. Uh, yeah. It's true. Judd was actually gonna direct this roast, but Comedy Central didn't want it to be 40 minutes too long. <laughs> James became famous for playing James Dean, uh, which makes sense, because they both sucked some dicks and made three good movies. <laughs> You asked us to do this, man. I don't know why. <laughs> to prepare for his role in 127 hours, he told me he spent five days with his arm inside the rock. Uh, actually, I, he goes by Dwayne Johnson now. I keep forgetting that. <laughs> He's the last guy I should be making jokes about. <laughs> Literally <laughs> kill me. Uh, look at me doing all the talking while you sit there doing nothing. I feel like I'm co-hosting the Oscars with you. <laughs> Say what you will about James's awful and borderline contemptuous performance at the Oscars. <laughs> In this world, there can only be one James Franco. Because if there were two James Francos, they'd never stop butt each other. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Seth MacFarlane, and welcome to the Comedy Central roast of Donald Trump. Or as Donald calls it, the Trump Comedy Central Trump roast of Donald Trump, 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 <laughs> Trump, Trump. How do you prepare for a night like this? Personally, I smoked a lot of pot. <laughs> and clearly don't give a shit about this show. So I'm, I'm kind of the perfect host for this roast or, or for the Oscars. Before we get started, though, I do have some sad news. Recently, the roast lost a very talented and beloved performer, and it would be wrong not to acknowledge him and to say how much he'll be missed. Larry King died 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Come on, Larry, you're old, don't deny it. Every time you lie, your balls grow longer. And we've got some other familiar faces up here on the dais. We've got Whitney Cummings and Lisa Lampanelli. Very nice. Um, you ever play <laughs> Mary Kill? Well, let's see, I, I think I would <laughs> Whitney, marry Lisa, and kill myself. <laughs> and uh, my friend Marley Matlin is here tonight. Um, it's fitting that Marley is here for the roast of Trump because Marley is appearing on the new Celebrity Apprentice. She will be competing for a charity that's yet to be announced, but will probably be some deaf bullshit. <laughs> I 
What, is, what does that mean? What am I doing? <laughs> now, since our man of the hour was foolish enough to agree to this, let's get started making one more piece of garbage with Donald Trump's name on it. <laughs> you know, it's good to see you, Donald. Well, we, thank we've you. just met, but it's good to see you. <laughs> Tonight, we honor a self made millionaire. He started with nothing, worked hard, and made a fortune. That man is Fred Trump, Donald's dad. <laughs> That's right, for all of his self-starter bullshit, he's basically Jaden Smith with a comb-over. <laughs> You're a grown man, you got hair like Dennis the Menace. What's, what's going on here? Did you, did you fall head first into a cotton candy machine? What, what, what happened? And Donald, uh, as long as I have you here, it's pronounced huge, not huge. And here's another one. It's pronounced, I am f***ing delusional, not I am running for president. <laughs> That's right. Trump says, he says he's going to run for president in 2012. But if his plan for America is to fire everyone, he's about two years too late. But for me, it's kind of tough to vote for a guy whose resting facial expression is, who farted? <laughs> he also sells Trump cologne. And fellas, that stuff can really get you laid. Basically, you pour it onto a cloth and press it to a woman's face until she <laughs> stops struggling. But even when you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth, hard times can strike, and that's just what happened to Donald. He was even forced into the ultimate act of degradation, starring in his own reality show. <laughs> and soon, the top-rated TV show in the nation starred a total asshole torturing people who were stupid enough to work with him. In addition to Two and a Half Men, The Apprentice was also a pretty popular show. <laughs> this guy has an ego. When Trump bangs a supermodel, he closes his eyes and imagines he's jerking off. <laughs> All jokes aside, though, I was, I was thrilled when they offered me the opportunity to roast such a brilliant, charismatic, totally self-made billionaire who I believe will one day run this country. And then the Facebook guy canceled and we got stuck with, with your bloated ass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Comedy Central Roast of Rob Lowe. That's right, we're here to honor one of the biggest stars of 1987. <laughs> with some of the biggest stars of 1984. <laughs> Ralph Macchio's here. Ralph's a great guy, I drove over here with him. Gave him five stars. Uh, many of you know Rob from Parks and Rec. A lot of you know him from the West Wing. A uh, couple people know him from Grindr. And if you swiped right, you met him in person 10 minutes later. At one time, Rob was one of the biggest stars in the world. He was an A-list actor. He was named one of the 50 most beautiful people in the world. And he f***ed the other 49. These are compliments. Is this guy hot or what? There's not a dry pussy in the place. I'm a clean up on every chick's chair. <laughs> For years, Rob Lowe had a sex addiction, but he cured it by getting less famous. <laughs> Rob was in a movie called The Outsiders back in the day. Remember that? His character was called Soda Pop because at the time, Rob was 98% Coke. I remember the first time I became aware of Rob. I was at a casting meeting for Tommy Boy when I came across your headshot, and I do mean came across. <laughs> He's good looking. It's not easy being Rob. He said being so handsome made it difficult for him to find meaningful roles. I wanted to ask Brad Pitt about that, but he was too busy acting in meaningful roles. <laughs> 
Rob's not a gay man, but he plays one every moment of his life. <laughs> Rob has a line of skincare products. You can buy them online. You won't, but you can. <laughs> Our younger audience might not know who you are, so kids, this is who your mom thinks about when she's f***ing your dad. <laughs> Rob looks great for his age. Many people have uh, wondered if he's had any plastic surgery. Those same people have wondered if Caitlyn Jenner has any plastic surgery. <laughs> Rob came up at a time when a sex tape could really ruin your career. But Rob had to do it the hard way, with his acting. <laughs> Rob was in the Austin Powers movie 16 years ago. Can you believe it's 16? Or as he calls it, 18. <laughs> yeah. These are little jabs. Rob was in Austin Powers, too. He was excited to meet the cat, Mr. Bigglesworth, since it had been a while since he'd made a movie with a hairless pussy. <laughs> Rob has been clean and sober for 26 years. To put that in perspective, if that's right. 26 years. To put that in perspective, if sobriety was a baby, he would have f***ed it 10 years ago. <laughs> it really makes you... Rob has been called the comeback kid. I read that wrong. Rob has come on the back of a kid. That's right. <laughs> in the video. That's right. Like we got, glad we got that out of the way. All right. Here we go. It's time for me to stop yapping and to bring up the first roaster. Uh, Pete Davidson, Pete's dad, never got to see him on SNL because he passed away on 9-11. Pete's mom has never seen him on SNL because she blinks. <laughs> is Pete white? Is he black? Ann Coulter needs to know if she, she can decide if she hates him. <laughs> Pete, I actually thought you were black, but I guess you just have your uh, dad's ashy skin. Welcome to the Comedy Central Roast of Alec Baldwin. They say you only roast the ones you love, but tonight we said F it. <laughs> Alec, I think we can all agree, is a great actor, an incredible philanthropist, and a huge dick. <laughs> can someone please explain to Ken Jong what a huge dick is? <laughs> Uh, it's great to see all the diversity on the stage, though. We have a gay, trans, black, Asian, mixed. I don't know whether to roast these people or register them to vote. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let's get to the real reason why we're all here tonight, to meet Robert De Niro. Robert, by the way, what's a legend like you doing at a comedy roast? I mean, is this the same Robert De Niro that did Little Fockers and Dirty Grandpa and... <laughs> yeah, I guess it kind of makes sense, yeah. I can't wait till someone makes an offer you can refuse. <laughs> We've got NBA All-Star Blake Griffin tonight. No offense, Blake, but I'm a better ball handler than you. Uh, Caitlyn Jenner is here. I can't believe you're here. Wow, you got balls, girl. Yeah. Caitlyn. Being here tonight is braver than anything you've ever done, but don't worry, any parts you don't like can be cut. <laughs> don't worry, Alec, nothing said here tonight will be meaner than what you left on your daughter's voicemail. <laughs> Alec once said that I was like a brother to him, which is why we haven't talked in 10 years. 
Of course, I wasn't his first choice to host tonight. His first choice was Tracy Morgan, but even Tracy said, quote, I'd rather go shopping at Walmart with the Walmart driver who hit me. <laughs> A lot of people think Alec is the best Baldwin brother, but someone saying you're the best Baldwin brother is kind of like your doctor saying, good news, you have the best kind of cancer. Alec almost got the role of Batman in 1989, but the part went to Michael Keaton because he actually had chemistry with Kim Bassinger. I never thought of that. Of course, uh, Alec's true passion has always been the theater. Alec loves to hit the stage because it can't press charges. Alec used to be a belligerent drunk before he became a belligerent sober person. <laughs> it's true, Alec had a substance abuse problem in the past, but he worked through it and hasn't done anything of substance in 20 years. <laughs> Alec is a romantic. He met his first wife on a movie set and his second wife on a swing set. Her name is Hilaria, and what's even more hilarious is they already have four kids together. But he finally got it right. His wife is a calming presence and an amazing yoga instructor. She was able to get Alec into this one position where he has to work until he dies. <laughs> the good part about having kids late in life, young, strong pallbearers. Now, Alex, sit back, unclench your fists, and I promise this will be the funniest thing you've ever been a part of that Tina Fey didn't carry you through. Welcome to the Comedy Central roast of Bruce Willis. I'm thrilled to be here. I've been a huge Bruce Willis fan my entire life. My father was a huge Bruce Willis fan, his father was a huge Bruce Willis fan, and his father before him. <laughs> but as an actor, I, I really admire Bruce's work. He can play anything from an asshole cop to an asshole ex-cop. <laughs> and when you got a star like Bruce, it takes no effort to assemble a great dais. Yeah. No effort at all. We have domestic guru Martha Stewart here with us. Martha. Martha's gonna do great tonight. Uh, she's used to working with unwanted leftovers. <laughs> Lil Rel, good to see you, sir. Uh, Lil Rel was on the Carmichael show, and now he's got his own show. And critics say that it'll be similar to the Carmichael show. Canceled. <laughs> And it's awesome that Edward Norton is here. What's up, man? One of the world's greatest living actors is going to get roasted by Edward Norton. <laughs> we also have peacemaker Dennis Rodman here with us tonight. <laughs> Dennis Rodman returning once again from North Korea. Uh, you know, Dennis may uh, be the only person on the planet who can prevent a nuclear war. So, I guess this is goodbye. <laughs> so, Bruce Willis. What a career, right? The Fifth Element, The Sixth Sense, The Whole Nine Yards, 12 Monkeys, Zero Oscars, <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, M. Night Shyamalan, Wes Anderson, Michael Bay. These are just some of Bruce's directors who refuse to be here tonight. <laughs> Bruce Willis is what you get if you isolate the white part of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> and, it, and it's not just action movies that made Bruce a star. He's actually a great dramatic actor, too. Like, I love The Sixth Sense. It's a great movie. And it's a really impressive performance. I don't know how you pretended not to be embarrassed while a 10-year-old kid acted circles around you, but you did it. And, uh, and the ending, I did not see that twist coming. I mean, I, I shouldn't spoil it, but 
I mean, it's been like 20 years. It's so good. Okay, so at the end of The Sixth Sense, Bruce goes back to making shitty movies. <laughs> I had a blast working with Bruce in a time travel movie called Looper. Thank you. Thank you. So in the film, uh, I play a young Bruce Willis, and he played a washed up Bruce Willis. But it was this crazy sci-fi premise where I end up in the future and Bruce ends up in a good movie made after 1999. <laughs> we want you to have a good time tonight, but don't get too comfortable up here because later we're gonna be replacing you with Ashton Kutcher. Relax, relax. Bruce gets along with him fine. He was even at Ashton and Demi's wedding. His gift was a toaster and $90 million. <laughs> But listen, whatever anybody says here tonight, here's the truth, okay? Deep down, every single one of us wishes that we could have that, that courage, that swagger of like, I don't give a f that, that you embody better than any other movie star of our time, really. You give us what we want and we love you for it. And so tonight, let's honor one of the three founders of Planet Hollywood, <laughs> not the one who won an Oscar, and not the one who became the governor of California, but the one whose agent is just an outgoing message that says he'll take it, Walter Bruce Willis. We are here to celebrate the career of a groundbreaking comedian, a hugely successful woman, celebrity apprentice champ, a true comedy icon, and a legendary bitch. Tonight, we're here for the one and only Joan Rivers. Give it up! Yeah. We can only pray Joan will have half as big a nervous breakdown as she did on The Celebrity Apprentice. That was juicy, wasn't it? Punk up, Leia! White trash! No worse than Hitler! Worse than Hitler. And she still won. <laughs> That's kind of the best part, isn't it? You know why? Because Joan has got the biggest and maybe hairiest balls in this room. <laughs> next to Brad Garrett. <laughs> and what an honor to have a true comedy icon here tonight, Mr. Carl Reiner. Very lucky. You're very lucky. Luckiest people in the world. Carl, you're a barely living legend. <laughs> now, you remember Joan, don't you, Carl? God made her out of one of your ribs. <laughs> now, as you know, Joan and I share a large gay following. <laughs> and he's here tonight. Let's hear it for Brad Garrett. <laughs> Brad, 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 look at you. Sitting there with a gut full of resentment. And by resentment, I mean Ray Romano's semen. Good. But for all of you homophobes out there, beware, tonight is gonna be gayer than that kid from American Idol this year. Brian Seacrest. Um, But let's talk about the real queen of comedy. Not only is Joan a comedian, she's an author, director, and most importantly, she's still breathing. <laughs> and now, let's do what everyone is afraid to do. Take a close look at Joan Rivers. Now, a lot of people are going to joyously say a lot of terrible things about you tonight, Joan. But as the saying goes, sticks and stones may break your bones, but at your age, you could actually break a hip taking a shit. <laughs> when Joan was born, the doctors took a look at her and said, holy shit, we're gonna make a fortune on this one. <laughs> then they got on the Mayflower and set sail for America. <laughs> Our Joan started out in Brooklyn as little Joan Malinsky. You know, my Joni, Jewish girls are supposed to grow up and marry doctors, not support them. <laughs> Jonal is not an Orthodox Jew, but men still fuck her through a sheet so they don't have to look at that face. <laughs> Joan 
can we talk? My guess is you don't have much of a sex life anymore. The only people you're screwing these days are your customers at QVC. <laughs> By the way, I got the earrings on. I got the earrings on. I got the earrings on. Joan Rivers collection, I love them. <laughs> Joan, look, you know I adore you. You're an inspiration to me. You have made it possible, certainly, for every female comedian to work. You're a trailblazer. You're the first and last woman in the history of Network Late Night to have a show. You put the red carpet on the map. Nobody watched the red carpet before Joan. You put that whole thing on the map. You got a fantastic career. You're famous all over the world. And no matter where you go or who you meet, everyone says the same thing your gynecologist said the first time he took a look at you. What an ugly c <laughs> Honestly, Joan, you're my favorite. You know that. So let the roasting begin. Welcome to the Comedy Central roast of Roseanne. <laughs> My goodness, what a night. Roseanne, Ellen Barkin, Katie Seagal, Carrie Fisher, it's like a menopause palooza <laughs> This show is serving up more old spoiled hens than a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> oh, and that reminds me, <laughs> Chick-fil-A. We honor a true show business icon. She is one of those rare celebrities so famous that she's referred to by just one name, bitch. <laughs> Ellen Barkin is here. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Ellen, your, uh, your sex scene in Sea of Love is the reason I'm a lesbian. There's nothing, there's nothing like seeing Al Pacino's greasy bare ass on the screen to make a girl want to eat pussy like she's about to be executed. Right? <laughs> Carrie Fisher is here! <laughs> now, Carrie's here to put Roseanne's weight and drug problems into perspective. <laughs> Carrie was once one of the hottest actresses in Hollywood, but that was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> And one of the good ones, Wayne Brady is here. Now, Wayne, you're gonna hear a lot of jokes tonight about how you're not a real black man, but I just want you to know, I still hid my purse. Good. Roseanne, it's great to finally meet you. You know, I waved to you outside, but then I realized it was just one of those inflatable parking lot gorillas. <laughs> um, what a huge mark you've made on the entertainment industry. There's your groundbreaking show, Roseanne. And then there's, yes. And then of course there's reruns of Roseanne. And having a hit show finally allowed you to do what you truly love to do, fire people. <laughs> of course you've experienced controversy. Everyone remembers your version of the Star Spangled Banner. Now, who could have predicted that your beautiful speaking voice wouldn't translate to singing? <laughs> <laughs> then you moved on to spiritual pursuits. Roseanne, you're a Jew that converted to Mormon, who converted to Kabbalah, and in 1990, of course, you converted to white trash. <laughs> when you married Tom Arnold. <laughs> now, Roseanne, it's not your fault you were attracted to Tom. You thought with all that white powder on his upper lip, there must be a donut somewhere. <laughs> said she had plastic surgery to get away from Tom Arnold, much like a non-crazy person would use a car. <laughs> By the way, Tom Arnold wanted to be here tonight, but at the last minute, no one asked him. Tonight, we're here to pay tribute to an actor, an author, director, humanitarian, and incomparable showbiz whore. I'm talking, of course, about Bob Saget. Now, if you uh, younger viewers are tuning in to watch Uncle Jesse help Danny Tanner find a tender way to solve <laughs> one of Michelle's problems, go f yourself. <laughs> so the good news is we're here to bust Saget's balls. The bad news is it's yet another show starring Bob Saget. 
which means it won't be funny and it'll go on for f***ing ever. I was with you for 192 episodes of Full House, and I can honestly say you don't have a funny bone in your body. Unless, of course, you count the one time you sat on Dave Couillet's cock. And by sat on, I mean hungrily backed into. And by one time, I mean eight seasons. You know, the whole time Bob and I were doing Full House, he was also hosting America's Funniest Home Videos. He did that show for so long, he can't get a boner unless a six-year-old boy waxes balls with a whiffle bat. <laughs> Bob's last HBO special was called That Ain't Right. Should have been called That Ain't Watchable. It was the most pathetic piece of shit I've ever seen. And need I remind you, I did eight seasons of Full House. Bob, you're an undeniable success, deserving of the millions of dollars you lost in the divorce. <laughs> Bob, you are a class act. And you've been there for me through the good times and bad, and I'm so flattered that you asked me to be the roast master this evening. I think this is gonna be a great night for you. I hope you have the time of your life, buddy. Thank you.